got this old uh, three-phase motor here whose insulation has failed. This motor is quite old. As you can see, the size of the hexagons that hold it together on the bolts indicate that it was made sometime around or before World War II, where the hexagon sizes went from a much larger size in relation to the bolt diameter to a smaller size to save metal. So it's getting on a bit now. Why do I believe it's an insulation fault? Here's the consumer unit that I'm running the motor from. If there was a short circuit or other overload in the motor, I'd be expecting my circuit breaker to be tripping out on the affected circuit. That's not happening. The breaker that's going is the earth leakage breaker. This indicates that there is a leak of electricity from the motor into the motor casing and down to earth. If anyone's spotted that this is a single phase fuse board and it's a three phase motor, I've got some other videos on YouTube about how I'm managing to run three phase motors from single phase supply, but that's for another day. I've pulled the motor apart and given everything a good clean. Even dirt around here, which often includes oil and grease, maybe metallic particles if it's been working in a manufacturing environment, is going to affect the insulation. So far I've just used a toothbrush and a vacuum cleaner to get the worst off, followed by gentle application of some compressed air. There are numerous electrical cleaners out there in aerosol form, which I'm going to use later on to try and get some of this really stuck on stuff off. But that's not the main issue that I'm looking at. But what I'm looking at here inside the connection block on the motor, these really cruddy black things here are the tails that go from the connection block to the field windings. And this really nasty black crud is the cotton and paper insulation on the motor tails. These are the things which if they get damp or oily are going to be the first to suffer degradation of the insulation and it's highly likely that these are the cause of my circuit breaker tripping. They can be renewed at home by yourself if you're reasonably careful. From the connection block the wires come into the motor casing. Here they are, this is uh, old cotton paper insulation and they run round in both directions where they enter the tappings into the field windings. So the job involves ever so carefully unpicking this insulation, finding each of the connections, breaking those connections and soldering on new ones. It's really important to keep all of these identified during the process. Make sure that the wire that you've disconnected ends back up on the correct terminal or bad things will happen. So I've pulled the wires out of the connection block very helpfully. Nope, the camera's not going to focus, but they are all labelled. That one's B1, so I don't have to label them myself. You can see what a grim state they're in. In my tests on this motor, I've not used the Mega. The insulation on these wasn't that good, even when it was new. And to subject it to the shock that a Mega will use, could well do further damage. All I've used to test between the insulation and the motor case is your bog standard 15 quid cheapy multimeter. If you can get a reading on the highest resistance range on the meter that means the insulation is not good enough. If you put tails of the meter from the casing to any of these conductors you should not be getting a reading at all it should just be reading open circuit. If it, if it shows you a number then that number's high enough to represent an insulation failure. Simple as that. And now starts the horrible bit. You can see where these wires enter in here. And they're all bound up in this cotton tape, which has been conveniently coated in bitumen. And we have to hack into that. It's really not going to look pretty. So as you can see, I've hacked away some of the insulation. 
I found that a sharp pointed pair of nail scissors is really handy for this because you can kind of burrow under the installation and, and snip away with a bit more confidence you're not going to wreck it than using a standing knife but an important safety warning before doing this make sure you don't have a wife or a girlfriend and here's the first connection this is where the motor tail joins the field winding this needs to be unsoldered and a new tail soldered on that's all it is repeat six times and following removal of the motor tails this is what you're going to be left with you see on here there's just two conductors on each of these which is soldered together lights getting a bit low now but you can see how I've used some stranded wire from some lighting cable to mechanically join the new motor tail on the right to the field winding on the left just taken a few wraps around prior to soldering. This is a close replication of how the old ones are joined together. Three new motor tails soldered on. Here's the first three motor tails connected onto the field windings. You can see for this one here, already it's got some insulation on it. There'll be more to follow. These two are just soldered up. The cable I've used is rated for 600 volts and a temperature rating of 105 degrees Celsius, which I think will be okay. Just one part of the motor terminal block, this is a two-part block. I've given it a bit of a clean-up, examined it for cracks, and initially it looked okay. These are made of a thermosetting plastic, but hmm, at the end there, just about see, there, this is starting to degrade, the material's breaking up. And a lot of this uh, thermostat plastic has a habit of turning into a material that's very good at conducting electricity when it gets old enough. This being off a pre-war motor is really quite old and I'm gonna say that it's done its turn and needs to be replaced without needing to resort to a mega or anything. Fitted a new motor terminal block. If you do an internet search for type KM motor terminal block it'll come up with one of these. Looks a bit weird that I've mounted on a piece of metal, but the original ones were mounted on the motor casing anyway. Having made and insulated the connections, times have moved on a bit since uh, cotton tape dipped in tar. I've secured these with PVC wrapping, some shrink wrap, and then some cable ties. Made sure none of this can vibrate. Any of this that vibrates with the movement of the motor is going to cause you problems. Ensured that none of this is going to chaff on anything, cause any other problems. All of this is really obvious. And then made the connections onto the new terminal block. It's exactly the same procedure for the bottom three connections, apart from that they're upside down. It's all starting to look pretty respectable now. You might still find that the insulation on here is a bit weak. Electric motors are no different from car engines, they need to be run every now and then. If the motor's been left in a damp environment or just not been used for a while, this insulation will start to soak up moisture in the air because it's made of old-fashioned materials. And you can do no better than to stick it in front of a fan heater. I actually had a motor that the windings were causing the earth leakage breaker to trip. And I left the motor in a room with a dehumidifier and every day you could see the resistance value increasing by quite a few hundred ohms. So even though this may appear to be completely had it, again all is not lost and you may be able to recover it just using the motor and working it to its full rate of capacity so that these get warm and dry out any moisture in them is really going to help it along its way. All back together. I've cleaned out the end casings, flushed through the bearings and re-greased them, given it some new lubrication fittings, and it's good to go.